मैं पहले आपसे माफी मांग लेता हूं कि दो दो एक है कि मैंने बहुत सोचा कि मैं हिंदी में बात करूं कि नहीं इट्स नॉट दैट आई कॉन्ट स्पीक इट हिंदी बट आई विल मेक एन ऑफुल नंबर ऑफ मिस्टेक्स आई कम फ्रॉम अ लैंग्वेज देर वे देर इज नो जेंडर एंड वन एक्विजिशन अगेंस्ट राइट आई गेस सो इट्स वेरी राइट about bengalis is that they seem that every other language is a dialect of bengali they speak it that way meri hindi bhi aise hi aayegi to anyway i have to ask you for uh, two uh, indulgence one is that i'll speak in english if you don't mind for some time and b there is a court order on with the basis of which i have to run friends i have i leave the intelligent discussion to people who are qualified to do so but let me thank from the bottom of my heart on behalf of the prasar bharti family to our honorable minister for taking so much time and giving us so much encouragement uh without the overall leadership and support of the ministry prasar bharti would not be able to make much progress and it is heartening that he has taken so much interest Now let me give you i i am not here for anything serious i'll just give you a couple of stories and leave number 1 why are we celebrating this day 23rd of july was selected as the indian as the broadcasting day did broadcasting start on that day well my answer is no broadcasting actually starts as a physics experiment in kolkata in 1884 this is the period when uh the first electromagnetic wave it put to use by invisibly floating on the air and doing an action acharya jagdish bose sent electromagnetic waves across the room to ring a bell and when his button dabake when the bell rang he was successful in establishing that you don't need wires it is wireless service unfortunately for us india was then under colonial domination and therefore an italian turn british took all the credit which is a well known story of how marconi took up the credit and finally get the nobel prize for it now this development in physics by creating electromagnetic waves gave us several opportunities the first was during the first world war what happened was you could start signal sending signals to ships but there was a problem it was a one way receiver you could send a signal and then wait for that ship to send its own signal back this was known as spark gap technology this was improved upon in 19 early 1900s and we got what is called amplitude and frequency modulation you are often surprised to see on radio sets am dikha hai amplitude modulation now what on earth does am mean and what on earth does fm mean very simple am means you can send the wave lehar in very slow degrees a long distance and a frequency modulation means you compress the waves like a harmonium and you can do it for a short distance that's all now coming to india Okay. Wow. Coming to India, the interesting part was that immediately after the First World War, bago bago question pucho. So all much past is safer. Anyway, so uh, in during the First World War, this was used, and immediately after that, this was a period when a farmer's son. actually started doing a lot of stuff on this technology and he is the one who gave the term broadcasting you know what broadcasting means no 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 it doesn't mean eh hindustan mein bada garbar hai is saloon doesn't mean a hair cutting saloon a saloon means a long room well we use long room for hair cutting but that's different is for broadcasting came in broadcasting simply means taking seeds in your hand and throwing it off throwing it all on that is the word broadcasting go and check up the dictionary a farmer's son was told to by his father to throw seeds out of the field and that was broadcasting and the first thing he did as a graduate in physics was to start 
using radio waves properly. He is the one who gave the term ah, sending of electromagnetic waves over long distance. But term ko he made it broadcasting. He said, "All I am doing is sending radio waves all around." After that, people forgot that broadcasting means agriculture. Broadcasting came to Akashvani, BBC. That's how we got the terms. Now, let's skip this part. Shukla has already told you. I'll just concentrate on a couple of contributions that Akashvani has done, without which perhaps none of us would be sitting here in so much peace. I'm exaggerating the problem. You must imagine the situation in India in 1947. 600 princely states. Hmm? 600 states saying, I'm Baroda. Mera Rajkot se koi taluk nahi. That's a state. And 17 provinces, if I remember. These 17 provinces were also at different loggerheads from Peshawar, Northwest Frontier Province. To make this into India required the leadership of people like the first name that comes is Adar Patel. Pandit Nehru, whatever, this was done. But remember, this India was got together in the first place from the 18th and 19th century by British bayonets, cantonments, railway lines, telegraph, Dadghar. It was got together as a physical unity under the British Empire and its subordinates. But the emotional unity was still missing. Dr. Surya Prakash and I belong to the same generation where we got so used to this horrible term, wo madrasi hai, wo bangali hai, wo punjabi hai. Nowadays, if you look at a wedding card, you will not see the same caste or language on two sides. That is India. And how did this come about? The emotional and unity of India was left in a vacuum when India came together. Because there were still fights and quarrels as to what would be our language. Would it be Hindi or Hindustani or Urdu or do we carry on English, etc., etc. This is the time in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, a subculture was started. And this subculture, as everybody knows, becomes the mainstream of Indian emotional popular culture, Hindi films and Bollywood. Hindi films are not Hindi in that technical sense of the term. If you take any slice and study anywhere, even then, when Asif made Mother India or whether you do it now, you will see the same thing. The light man is a Kannada. The sound man comes from Odisha. The actor is half Punjabi, half Marathi. The actress would be maybe Tamil. And it goes on that way. It's a contributory effort. The scriptwriter belongs to a language. The storyboard is prepared by someone. The buff radio is held by someone else. It's a complete contribution where you find that not more than 5% belong to the same group. That is the first joint creation of India before our cricket teams came up. That is where India pulled in. And what they produced remain the finest denominator of our emotions, language, and culture. Okay, it was not high-flown, but if you look back and hear the songs of 50s and 60s, we consider them classics. Mere Vatan, whatever it is. What everyone, everyone is a classic. And today, if we have an emotional bond and unity, it is through the medium of the common shared heritage of songs. Now, what has Akashwari got to do with it? Very simple. When it all started, when this film song started, there was no medium for it. You could either go to the cinema hall, which 0.1% went, or you could hear it from gramophone, where one person could hear. The first democratization of sound was taken up by Radio Ceylon, as everybody knows, Binaka Geetmala and others. And that too happened because of a British mistake. The British had set up propaganda shortwave towers in Ceylon for reaching Singapore and tackling Subhash Chandra Bose in Burma. Once they left, these towers were standing and Ceylon Radio Ceylon was given it. They didn't know what to do. They came to Bombay. They picked up a 21-year-old boy called Amin Sayani who prepared and conjured these programs. As a response, Akashwani started Vivid Bharati and it is my submission that between 57 and 
2000, the contribution made by Vivid Bharti alone in bringing about the emotional unity amongst Indians through a common language of songs, criticism, discussions on, wiped off all debates to the contrary. So that is Akashwani's contribution of democratizing sounds, democratizing the popular base of India's culture. And how did it do it? We have nearly 400 radio stations. As Shukla told you, when the British left, they left behind six stations. Sorry, four metros, one in Tiruchirappalli and one in Lucknow. That's all. They left behind three more that went off to Lahore, Peshawar, Dhaka. The Nawabs had four, Hyderabad, Trivandrum, um, I think Baroda, and Mysore. That's all. And now we have 400 plus. Do you know that every day, every day as I'm talking to you, every day in a small state like Manipur, where the entire population is 30 lakhs, Akashwani broadcasts in 30 languages so that all ethnic groups have some satisfaction of hearing their mother tongue sometime a day. This is the role of Akashwani. I'm sorry it is not the um, most, uh, um, sometimes it's not the most uh, jazzy stuff, but it has a role to play. And it goes on and on. In the cementing of Indian, I better run, I have a court order. Now, uh, just one more point. Was it that Akashwani played only to this popular sentiment of Hindi song and played a great role in getting all of us together? There's no doubt about it. But what did it do for the core of Indian culture, our Sanskriti? Remember, that too was undemocratic. Classical music was meant for the class. Every Natya Mandapam will show you about 120 listeners, that's all. The democratization of sound of classical music was taken upon as a mission by the Information and Broadcasting Minister, Pandit Keskar. And from 1952 to 1962, he banned any other form of music to make it mandatory. So when you got up in the morning, you would hear classical from Vedic chanting and Gurwani and then move on to other forms of Hindustani classical and Carnatic, so that it was drilled into our senses. Aaj, today, if you have billions of Indians, millions of Indians who understand the nuances of classical music, who can understand rag, tal, swar, it was thanks to the mohal created by Akashwani through its stations. I would humbly submit that Akashwani still has a great role to play. And the current amount of importance given from right from the top means that radio continues to be a vibrant mode of communication, information. Once people thought that radio was dead and TV was only surviving. Now it's known all over the world that radio has staged a comeback. And as the minister said, it's a non-intrusive medium. You can have it on the side and go on with your work by thought that came to me, and I will share it more with my chairman and board and ministry as we move, is why don't we go in for a campaign for both Saste radio sets once again. Both Saste radio set. I encourage everybody like Swach Bharat and others, that you have 100 rupees, I know that FM, the mobile makes you, the mobile gives you the opportunity of listening to FM. But other than FM also, medium wave has its beauty, and many people don't listen to FM on the mobile because you can get interrupted. Your battery will go down. So in addition to that, a radio that is meant to be a radio set will cost 100, 150, sorry, just 100, 150 rupees. This popularization can start as a small contribution to go back. People want to. With these words, I would summarize that Akashwari's contribution begins, as he said, in 19... 20s, 27, but the main role would be picked up after 1947. If India is today an emotional hole where we love to have dosas and appams with chicken butter masala, where all of us cross marry and cross talk and where none of us ask who, where are you from, what is this? If this amount of emotional unity, this amount of 
let us say sub uh, uh, the emergence of a common identity has taken place it has taken place not by accident but thanks to the national broadcaster to a large extent with these words i thank you for patiently listening to me god bless you